I think the government just stepped into our squeeze. Or they're, they're trying to bail in or bail out. What's going on? I need help. This is crazy. So this is uh, the vessels. Um, I think I found the vessels of, of, or the instruments they're using to transfer all this liquidity to the secondary market. And um, it's pretty insane once you get dig into it. Now, everything I'm saying here is my opinion. I'm, I'm showing you things that are facts that I'm drawing conclusions based off of. So please don't take my decision as fact. I'm trying to improve on this decision by having somebody poke holes in it and helping me find facts around this to find further details because there's parts of this lacking that I haven't figured out. So bear with me. Let's get started. Follow the arrows in this presentation for, you know, to follow trains of thought. Read slowly if you have to. I'm going to link uh, this pr presentation below as well as um, references as well. This applies to both. And before we, we begin, I'm going to refer to you know what as popcorn stock for the purpose of super stock. I hope you can respect that. It is what it is. Everyone knows I'm in both. Uh, everyone knows I'm more in the, uh, GameStop than AMC. Everyone knows why. That should be no surprise to anybody. However, I do think this will apply to both, and I'm jacked to the tits for both, or this does apply to both, sorry. So, and I'm baked to shit by the way, so I apologize about that. So anyways, volume was flatter than my dad's tits today and last Friday. If you combine GameStop's volume alone from last Friday and today, you have about 6 million total, barely. I'm sorry, 3 million. 3 million, that's even worse. So if you combine GameStop's volume alone from last Friday and today, you have about 3 million million volume. AMC is on the lower side as well. Now they have had a lot more FOMO and a lot more uh, people jumping in lately so take that for what it's worth. Uh, as far as volume I usually pay attention to GameStop side of it but um, we know that these stocks do follow each other and it's based on what I'm about to show you as well. So meanwhile in ETFs or I like to call them WTFs at this point uh, of popcorn stock and GameStop. Um, yeah so let's go through this. IWM is the number one ETF with the most exposure to AMC, and it also happens to be, um, I think, the most or the best performing as well as of lately. Um, could be wrong on that, but the point is they have the most exposure. IJR has the most exposure to GameStop. Now, what's significant about this? Well, they're both iShares, and they're both issued by none other than BlackRock. Now, if you look at the net assets of these two uh, ETFs. You get a combined 141.27 billion net assets. You have 69, <laughs> 69.79, not as funny, uh, billion for IWM, and then you have 71.48 billion as per Weeballs. And I did edit this out to reflect accuracy. Now, the interesting thing is look at the volume today and look at the volume today for IJR. The volume for IJR was more than GameStop, almost double GameStop. The average volume for the IWM is 25, and the most interesting part is that AMC's in IWM, GameStop's in IJR as of today. They haven't reset their nav or anything, they haven't got any update, so as far as I know, this is the case. So recap, AMC and GameStop have been experiencing very low volume. The volume of the underlying ETFs with the most exposure have had absurd volume. There's a federal fund that I'm about to show you inserted into each ETF and we just had short interest updates so I'm going to show you that as well. So the short interest before we get into the funds, um, this is where I'll need some help because remember how we saw that the uh, assets totaled to around uh, 141.27 billion? Well. This is a IWM right here, and their short interest of their shares outstanding is 37.62%, down 12.37%. Same for uh, IJR, you know, their short interest is very, very low, comparatively speaking, basically a non-factor, but there is 4.394 million shares of short interest, down 4.27%. Now, my question is, for wrinkle brains out there that may know, if the net assets is like this right here, and the shares outstanding are like this. I mean, I don't believe this data anyway from Fintel, but I'm wondering which one do we go off of? Is it this, the net asset, or is it the shares outstanding? So genuine question, because if it's this one here, holy cow, that's crazy. So IJR and IWM, let's see their two or their top two holdings. Let's go ahead and see what those are. Well, of course, IJR is, wait a minute, what? XTSLA? 
What is that? Market value, $911 million. Hmm. Well, we'll look into that in a second. However, their, uh, their next biggest one is GameStop. And, of course, IWN's biggest one is AMC as of the latest they've updated this. So, is this a government stepping in? Because that says Black Cash Fund Treasury. And whenever I see treasury, I think government. So let's go ahead and see what the heck this is. So XT, ESLA, BlackRock Fund. I think that's supposed to be XT, SLA. Uh, no E. I'll, I'll edit that out. So this BlackRock Fund with GameStop inserted into the IJR ETF. Um, this is their top 10 holdings. Now, it looks to me like bonds, but this is the second area I'm going to need help with because I'm not sure. Um you know this area of like bonds and everything so if someone wants to look into this part of it that'd be great to find out what the hell this is all i know is that it looks to me like what maybe that's the maturity six one six ten i don't know we have one on seven thirteen though as well so i don't know if that's relevant or not so again any help there would be great now i thought this was interesting that the daily liquid assets of this uh xt sla are 100 percent same with weekly so this may be where IJR is getting that net asset value from is from these humongous uh, bonds or whatever these are here. So this is where it gets super weird. Okay, so this is IWM uh, as per Fintel. Now I know this is accurate because it actually updated today. This is their um, institutional owners. Now I don't know about you, but I've never heard of any of these. There's an IBM retirement fund in here. This smells very 2008 esque to me. Um, as far as IJR, these are funds disclosing short positions in IJR. Citadel, Jane Street, and, you know, Sushrihana, the usual suspects, right? So taking all of this and going down this rabbit hole, I scroll further down this page in IWR, and then I come across this. So follow along with me here. We have AMC and GameStop, each of them in two separate ETFs that happen to be the ETFs with the most exposure getting a lot more volume than you would think would be possible on an ETF, right? You have every hedge fund that we know of in each of these basically and you also have BlackRock who issued both of these in them as well with their own funds that we're about to look into further. So. BlackRock funds iShares Russell. That's so. Hold, wait a minute. There's a fund for the iShares, which is the fund that they use to fund the the ETFs. What? Um. So once you look into, I looked into the global allocation fund. Didn't really get anywhere. So I chose to go more with the iShares Russell. Clicked on that one. Looked up the top ten holdings for uh, the iShares Russell, and I found this, a BlackRock cash fund, institutional. And then there's also one for the treasury. So I went the institutional route and opened that one up. And then this fund right here is, they have literally every iShares ETF in here as of 628. And another BlackRock fund, an ETF trust fund. So that's where I'm at. My brain's about to explode. Um, the by the way, institutional value of just this one fund is uh, 48 million times a thousand so yeah I think this is this is it right here this could this is like the uh, Pandora's box right here um, how far does this rabbit hole go that's what I don't know I have a few questions I, I hope that at least someone's gonna be able to follow along with me on this um, it's crazy stuff summary so far um, whatever this is and um, you know IJR and IWN for a TLDR or TLDW I guess are vessels being used to transfer massive amounts of capital, derivatives, cash to the secondary market back and forth? And these ETFs are government funds of BlackRock, private funds of BlackRock that contain more ETFs of BlackRock, all issued by BlackRock, as well as, as the banks and hedge funds that are all involved in this as well. So what's going to happen? I don't know, because we need to figure out what else the hell's in here. So let's get to work. Let me know what y'all think about this.